So, let's do a little recap of the last tutorial. What did we do? We've seen how brains seem to progressively extract larger features, while at the same time becoming more and more invariant to things like location. And we thought a little about the problem, what makes a representation useful? And then we've seen how convolution works and how they produce equivariance, which is that we produce the same activity just at a different place in the map if we move the image a little bit. And then we've seen how max pooling allows a certain amount of invariance and how ultimately by alternating between these two, we can progressively build up invariances. What will we do today? We will start putting things together and train them. First on simple data sets and standard architectures, and then talk about the broad applicability of convnets. So let's just recapitulate how architectures of convnets look like. We might have an image as input, and this image might be 28 by 28 pixels, as in the case of MNIST. Then we will have a convolution that will basically give us, provided that, uh, that we do some amount of padding, that convolution will give us six features here, also 28 by 28. And then here's a max pool. The same number of features, six features here, but now it's a 14 by 14 map, which means we did a, max, a two by two max pool with a stride of two. Then we will again do a convolution. Now we will have 16 filters of 10 by 10. Now, why did it just get smaller? Well, it's an issue of, uh, uh, of padding. So we, here we have another convolution, and then we'll have another max pool. So at this point of time, we will have 16 features here, and they will each be five by five. So now we can uh, we can of course flatten this, producing a long vector, and then we will switch to uh, to a dense network where we go here to 120 units, 84 units, and 10 units at the end. Okay, so this would be how a larger confinement would look like. Another way, and much more convenient to visualize that, is we take an image, five by five convolution with a padding of two two by two average pool, stride two. Now like here, this isn't max pool, here's average pool. Another way of doing it, similar results. Okay, five by five convolution here, 16 channels now. Another average pool, and then a dense layer, another dense layer, another dense layer. Observe also another thing here. Now like here, we will go to a smaller spatial scale by a factor of two. Here we introduce six times as many features as we have. So here, at first we have more channels, if you want, than we have in the beginning. And then after the max pool, we have a little less, which is 16 channels of five by five. Then we have another average pool. No, like we basically, when we do the convolutions, we make the space bigger. And the max pool then, or the average pool as we use it here, makes them smaller again. And then we have multiple dense uh, layers. They always get a little bit smaller. In general architectures where we build in a little information loss layer after layer, they often do really well. Now, let's look a little bit at the output dimensions. And this is part of a recap of week one. What will be the output dimensions of a single two-dimensional convolution operation that has an input of size 300 times 400, a kernel size of 5 by 5, a stride of 1, and a padding of 2. And once we are there, what will be the output dimension of a subsequent 2D max pool with a 2 by 2 filter, a stride of 2, and no padding? And what will the, uh, be the dimensions of these two? Your turn to calculate. 